Good morning, church, and thank you for tuning in for our devotion again this morning. I want to read today from 1 Corinthians, and we're going to look at uh, chapter 16, verses 5 and, sorry, verses 1 to 4. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 to 4. This is Paul writing uh, to the Corinthian church. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as much as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. And when I come, whomever you appoint by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. But if it is fitting that I go also, they will go with me. Now this might be a good, uh, a good passage on giving and uh, looking after one another, especially considering that the church in Jerusalem was heavily persecuted and uh, quite impoverished. They didn't have a lot of support at that stage. I mean, they were in the heart of Judea, you know, the Jewish faith. But the point I want to make today with this passage is that God is not random. Why does Paul say, whomever you appoint, uh, we, I'll send him, and if it is fitting, I'll go too? Or why are we collecting for the church in Jerusalem and not other churches? Because, as I've said, the church in Judea was struggling, so there was a specific reason for that to happen. Now, why send the one approved uh, by your letters? Well, the church had to come up with a representative that they trusted to handle money. And so the one that they recommended was the one to be sent, not just any rando. And not someone that Paul sends as well, so it can be seen as a proper heart from the Corinthian church, their true heart in giving, sending one of their own to give to the church in Jerusalem. And then why does Paul say, well, if it is fitting, I'll go with him? Because Paul was a Jew and the Corinthian church was Gentile. Now, at this stage, there was still a little bit of confusion about the Jewish and the Gentile believers, you know. Do we still uphold the Mosaic law or do we ab abolish it completely? Do we live like Gentiles? Do we live like Jews? Do we get circumcised? Do we not get circumcised? So there's this whole discussion as well. Uh, and in fact, there was even a council held where uh, a lot of the apostles got together in Acts, um, somewhere in Acts, and they had a discussion about this. Uh, so why Paul is saying, well, let me go as well if it is fitting, so that he could act as an intermediary between the, the, the Gentile Corinthians and the Jewish uh, believers in Jerusalem. So when we look at a passage like that, we, we realize very quickly that this isn't just random. It's not just a random, okay, give some money for the church in Jerusalem. No, it, there was a specific purpose for the church in Jerusalem, a specific need for the money, and a specific way that it had to be done. So that, you know, with, with a pointer believer from the Gentile church, with Paul, in case there was any hostility or uncertainty from the Jewish church in receiving from the Gentile church. So there's a whole lot of these dynamics in play that aren't always obvious to us at a first glance. But what we need to come to realize, and this is my message today, is that God doesn't work uh, in the random. God is not random. His word is not random. Everything's got a specific purpose. God works in specifics. I'll say that again. God works in specifics. There may be lots of things we read about in the Bible, lots of genealogies, lots of numbers that we that are sometimes lost on us. You know, why are we, we reading so this one was the son of this one and this one was the son of this one and this one was the son of that one? It, it sometimes doesn't make sense to us. But it's not there for no reason. There's a reason to that. And there's a very specific reason for that. Maybe to the original Jewish readers, those genealogies bring up some family history because they're very clan oriented, very family oriented in that sense. So this is that's my point again. God works in specifics, not in the random. As we can see from a seemingly unconnected passage in 1 Corinthians that's sometimes lost on us, or maybe it's just a random thought about giving. No, there was a specific purpose. Uh, there was a specific way it had to be done and uh, in a specific context. So, as I said, God works in specifics and we need to too, especially when we're handling his word, but especially as well in our lives, in what he's given us to do, in, in our task in building his kingdom. God works in specifics and so do we need to work in specifics. Amen. Let's pray. 
Father God, thank you for your word to us this morning. Thank you for uh, reminding us that you aren't a random God, that you don't do things by accident or by chance, but everything and everything in your word, everything you've done, all has a reason. They all have a reason. They all have a specific purpose. Thank you that you are so planned and organized and, and uh, so uh, uh, you have everything under control far more than we could ever imagine. We could ever think that we could have it under control because you are the sovereign I am. You don't work in random and we know that you work with specifics. Thank you that you are planned and organized. Thank you that you have a specific task for each one of us. Thank you that you are with us every step of the way. We bless you and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.